Hello, everybody. My name is Leonardo Bravo, and I am here to share with you folks the creativity at the core module uh, for arts partnerships developed by the LA County Office of Education and the Riverside County Office of Education. Part of my work here today will be to share some of my own um, best ideas, um, my own research based on the work I've been doing for decades, and how these can actually benefit your own schools, your school districts, in ways that ultimately we can begin of thinking as arts partnerships, as true collaborations, collaborations that ultimately um, benefit the entire school community not only thinking about the benefit for the students, but also thinking about the benefits for classroom teachers, for administrators, for the families, and how we can think of that school community as a vibrant and um, culturally thriving uh, community of participants. I wanna open with this quote by Bell Hooks, who is one of my favorite theorists, scholars, thinkers, and her quote really has to do with creativity, joy, and freedom, and it says, all of us in the academy and in the culture as a whole are called to renew our minds if we are to transform educational institutions and society so that the way we live, teach, and work can reflect our joy in cultural diversity, our passion for justice, and our love of freedom. I love this call to action by Bell Hooks, the sense of really thinking about how creativity, joy, and freedom can be embedded, can be imbued in the work that we do in classrooms, and how that, again, we can think of our school communities um, as places where the diversity of the human experience, the diversity of our expression can be, can be shown um, and can ultimately be expressed by students. This module is to give you a sense of some learning outcomes, how arts community partnerships happen for schools, how they help promote high quality arts education for all students, what are the benefits, um, what are some of the entry points for arts partnerships, and how they can also promote culturally responsive education through the arts. So how do we define arts partnerships? Arts-based school community partnerships are really a great strategy for building robust art resources and opportunities for K-12 students. Um, many times schools, um, public schools, don't have enough resources, don't have enough support to bring opportunities for all students to experience the arts, both visual and performing arts. Finding local arts partnerships is a fantastic way to make that happen, to begin to look at the dimensions that need to be added, the experiences, the opportunities for students to really participate, experience, be part of, and find their own sense of agency and meaning through the arts. Many arts partnerships happen through the involvement of school and district officials, leaders of cultural institutions, such as performing arts centers, museums, and other organizations, government officials, and also with the support of philanthropists, foundations, researchers, academic uh, partners as well. So really think about partnerships as a very sort of holistic, global, expansive approach to how you can bring arts education into your schools and school districts. The purpose of arts partnerships is to touch the lives of all our students, is to find vehicles, find entry points for our students to express what they know, what they feel, what they think about, how they are socially engaged, emotionally engaged through the arts, through the visual and performing arts. And when we say visual and performing arts, we mean fine arts, painting, drawing, sculpture, we mean dance, theater, music, are all the different dimensions in which we as individuals can express our creativity through the arts. So part of the essential questions that we're trying to answer here is how can we build and leverage arts partnerships to promote a high quality standards-based arts education for every student? And how is your school using arts partnerships and arts integration to help all students succeed? Again, this is about creating an analysis and understanding of where the gaps might be, what the needs might be at your local school, which grade levels you might want to target, which arts disciplines might be the ones that truly help your students succeed, and how are your partners, either an arts organization or individual artist, helping to promote high quality standards-based arts education by bringing 
art content that is standards based, but also aligning and integrating that to your own content standards and finding those beautiful and sort of synergistic alignments. So the key topics in arts partnerships are really the benefits of the arts and local communities, how to build effective arts partnerships, how that helps to create stronger community connections and community cohesions, and how we help to make that pitch, that sale, that basic understanding and promotion of the impact that is happening at your local schools through the arts. I brought in this great sort of indicators um, that recently came out from Art Place America. They really look at, at the role of arts and culture in community development. And as you can see here, arts and culture really sort of create such broad and expansive impacts. Um, we think about the arts and culture helping to bridge differences, to ensure cultural continuity around creative traditions and rituals, to facilitate collaboration um, between various community partners, to build that collective power as artists have long been activists, organizers, and allies to social change movements, and how to, how to really feel that sense of collective power in your school and your school district, and to ultimately imagine new approaches, how artists are innovators and idea generators, um, how artists helps, help us think about a sense of transformation by tapping um, an unlimited sense of the imagination. So what are the various ways in which arts partnerships uh, can vary um, and employ a broad range of strategies um, at your school? Certainly arts partnerships can bring professional development opportunities for arts instructors. How do we make arts, uh, arts instructors and classroom teachers as well smarter about arts integration strategies that can be used on a day-to-day -day basis with students? And those are arts integration strategies that can happen across the board with language arts, reading and writing, social studies, math, um, many, many different ways in which the arts can help um, your students really embed and sort of internalize that content. Arts partnerships can also happen through teaching artist residencies by bringing in an artist to work directly with your students during the school day. And that can be a, a teaching artist that specializes in dance, theater, music, or, or visual arts. And again, that's really ultimately about collaboration, about sitting down with the participating teaching artists, understanding what they're bringing to, to your classroom, but also articulating what your needs are, what your student needs are, and how those needs can be met through these artistic strategies, um, the content, knowledge, and skills, and, and opportunities that a teaching artist can bring. The other part, of course, is having field trip opportunities to art institutions, to performing arts centers, to museums, and how that helps enrich and broaden the perspective and experience of, of students. How we can bring in school performing arts events, again, bringing that richness of the, of the creative and cultural expression to the school. How we can think about experiences that happen during the in-school day and extend them into the after-school component and how these things can be aligned. So the after-school is not an afterthought, but really a way of continuing to strengthen those, those arts education, arts integration experiences for students. And ultimately, how do we support uh, arts partnerships? How do we find the funding, the grants, the resources to help make these robust experiences that are long-term, long-lasting collaborations and partnerships between schools and arts organizations and artists. As I said before, a key consideration is uh, how to secure broad buy-in and support, um, how to work with principals, administrators, uh, teachers to really understand what the need might be at the school, how to find those partners locally, regionally, uh, the arts organizations that can provide work in schools that, that can understand how to bring the arts content and make it relevant um, and key to, to what is happening in the schools. And then ultimately, how to secure those funds, um, either through state and local resources, either through funding resources that an arts organization or nonprofits can bring uh, through foundations, federal funding, state funding, how to align those pieces together so the funding helps support something that is long-term, that is strategic, that really addresses the needs for, for growth and, and continued success at the schools.
And then the other thing, like in any, any collaboration, is to be proactive in identifying and addressing what the challenges may be, what the conflicts could be, how to work with multiple partners, how to really be, um, be able to articulate clearly what the needs are for schools, what the needs are for individual grade levels, classrooms, um, and how to work collaboratively so that way down the road, you don't find those challenges of saying, I thought you wanted this, or I thought the expectations were this. So to create that roadmap and to be able to do some backwards planning so that you can get to and meet those goals, you can assess them, you can see, actually truly see and identify, um, not just qualitatively, but quantitatively, the impact that, that having arts partnerships, arts integration uh, programs, and strategies with your students. Some key considerations to take into account for, for successful partnerships, like any partnerships that happen at a school, is to designate key stakeholders to oversee the partnerships. This could be a principal, this could be another administrator, this could be somebody that oversees curriculum and instruction. And again, how to develop buying from the buy-in from classroom teachers um, that, can, that can create that energy and commitment uh, to ensuring that a partnership has is successful over the long term. And how to make sure that point person, that liaison becomes um, ultimately having that responsibility to, co to coordinate among the many, many stakeholders, which also include the outside partners, include the arts organizations, the cultural institutions, um, maybe state agencies as well. One of the key strategies that I found over so much of this work is to really seek out, share, and analyze data, to really kind of look at data as a way to measure progress against specific course, uh, specific goals, and to also change course as needed. Um, one of the things that I found has been critical is having that clear outline about how data will inform the partnerships and what those indicators are. If we're looking for true success, how do we embed the indicators that really show us where students are gaining traction in terms of their academic, in terms of their social and emotional development in these arts experiences, and both in the content level of the arts themselves, the standards, the art standards, but also how these experiences align to the other content standards and how, of course, they can robustly strengthen and, and really amplify each other. And as I said before, really essential to the effective arts partnerships is the human aspect, is the joy, the creativity, the freedom, the collaboration that happens between artists and classroom teachers. Um, how we begin to really see these, these experiences in terms of synergy, a more kind of holistic approach to the role of the teaching artist in the classroom how both can be learners in these experiences. And through that learning and that observation, you're able to strengthen both, pra both practices. So ultimately having that clear understanding of the gifts that each person, the artists, the classroom teachers, the administrators ultimately bring to that partnership. And in that sense, if we think about it from the human experience, the human factor, how that culture begins to thrive. And it's a culture of collaboration and community building that happens at the schools. And here are some suggestive collaborative practices between teachers and teaching artists that I've, I've found successful. Obviously you engage in conversations to establish shared core visions and beliefs. You have to start some, from somewhere. You have to find out the why, why you're doing this, what, what drives the partnership and what those core visions and beliefs are that are aligned that you share together. How to co-create lessons that support learning in the arts and learning in the content areas. Again, it's ultimately how to be collaborators, how to understand the expertise that each, each participant, each, each member of the partnership brings to the table. And how, in, how to engage in continuous dialogue and inquiry with each other as the partnership progresses. If, for example, you have an artist in your classroom for a period of, let's say, six, six to 10 weeks, how, how are you observing, how are you helping that data analysis, observing what happens from week to week from each one of these experiences that help you kind of align, recalibrate, understand um, how to move the partnership forward? 
how to build a community of learners in an environment of trust. Ultimately, this is about kind of, again, shared practices, shared core, core visions and beliefs. You're making those core visions and beliefs come to life in the classroom. It's about trust building. It's about really building that sense of community and collaboration uh, for each other. And then ultimately, how equally assisting each other in the, in the implementation and assessment of lessons really drives, ultimately drives the impact and, and uh, success of the partnerships. So for yourselves in your region, in your school district, in your local school, one thing is to, again, how to identify where do the arts exist in local communities? potentially list all the potential partner organizations where the arts might appear in your community. You can start with nonprofit organizations, parks and recreation agencies, museums and cultural institutions, youth development agencies, but also expand outside of that. Think about all the organizations that might be in the business of creating more vibrant and thriving communities. Think about what the role of the arts and creativity might be at the center of that. And how to think about extending those bridges to those organizations, to those efforts in which way, in ways that your school is central to those vibrant and thriving communities as well. The other piece to think about is the strength and the, the conviction around professional development with arts organizations, thinking about that collaboration, that synergy that artists can bring in terms of their own influence as a cultural agent inside the school community, um, how artists engage not only the classroom, but engage the larger community itself, um, how they bring that spirit and that energy of imagination and creativity to a school community, um, and how to ultimately sort of harness and, and activate that and see that as a catalyst um, to your classrooms, to your schools, to the families that belong to that school. And finally, some steps for schools and districts to implement successful arts partnerships, to identify and connect with the key stakeholders in your school and outside of your school community that promote the arts, to develop a strategic arts education plan, because you don't want these isolated one-of-a-kind experiences that might happen at your school that don't, do not have a long lasting impact. Meaning how can you create something strategic that goes from year to year that really builds on each grade level that really sort of becomes a true scaffolding uh, for learning, for ex transformative experiences for your students in the arts. So think about what it takes to get there from year one through perhaps year three or five um, and how, again, that requires a different sense of stakeholders, a different sense of commitment, because you are seeing a much bigger picture of transformation within your school community. Next to that is how to fund that, how to allocate the funding for that kind of strategic vision. What does it mean to start in year one? And perhaps year one can just be professional development for teachers in terms of integrating the content knowledge and skills in the arts. And year two, you begin to think about artist residencies and other experiences for, for uh, students themselves that become those more intensive building blocks for learning. And then think about how to begin uh, mapping out the different disciplines. Or if we think about dance, theater, music, and visual arts, how to create a roadmap for your students, either K th through 12, K through five, or middle school. And what are those necessary entry points in terms of the grade levels? and how the standards help us sort of frame that for our students. And then finally, and ultimately, how to ensure equitable access for all, meaning it's not just for a select few, it's not just for a few grade levels, but how to think broadly and really robustly on how these arts experiences and professional development can strengthen, can truly strengthen your school communities. Well, hopefully this is a little bit of a roadmap for your school, your school district, your coordinators, your stakeholders in the arts, which truly should be everyone at the school. Because if we don't believe in creativity and joy and freedom and those values that are brought to the forefront through the arts for all our students, our families, we, we need to understand that to create these thriving school communities, um, we need creativity and imagination at the forefront. And I truly hope that these few steps lined up here um, help you think, reflect, and ultimately activate arts partnerships at your schools. 
Thank you so much for your time. Please pass it on. Thank you for believing in this work. I appreciate the work you do.